Hi, this is Dr. Kat Thies from Central New Mexico Community College. In video E, we're going to focus on the bronchial tree of respiratory anatomy. Once the trachea begins to branch first into bronchi, singular bronchus, and eventually bronchioles, we form the so-called bronchial tree. And within that bronchial tree, we see 23 essentially hierarchical levels of branching. And by no means are we going to give all the hierarchical term, um, structures or levels um, names, but you do need to know the most important ones, the initial big branches that is. So notice that the trachea is going to give rise to two bronchi that allow for the air to enter into the lungs. And we refer to them as the right and the left primary bronchi, sometimes referred to as the pulmonary bronchi, meaning that they're leading into the lungs. Now our lungs are made up of lobes, and we'll come back to that um, when we get to our video on the lungs. And so when we see that our primary bronchi split such that we end up seeing branches going into each lobe, we talk about the secondary bronchi or the lober bronchi. And finally, each one of these lobes is made up of segments. And therefore, we have tertiary bronchi or segmented um, bronchi, bronchi going to these segments. Now, we continue to see further and further branching until we ultimately get to the bronchioles. And within the bronchioles, we have different kinds of bronchioles with different hierarchical levels. The bronchial tree will go to the very end of the bronchioles, but still prior to where we see a gas exchange occurring for the bronchioles to still belong to the conducting zone, which is what we've been focusing on. We have not moved into the respiratory zone yet. Histologically, the bronchial tree is very interesting because we see a very clear change and switch in the epithelial tissues and connective tissues and muscle tissues um, to become more adaptive to the smaller and smaller structures that form the bronchial tree. So let's take a closer look at that. If we first focus on the epithelial tissue and the lamina propria, collectively referred to as the respiratory mucosa, then we see that we primarily see in the upper portion of our respiratory tract pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue, particularly the nasal cavity all the way to the upper pharynx and larynx, and then even into the trachea and bronchi. But as we go down the bronchial tree, we're going to see that the, the thickness of this respiratory mucosa and therefore the thickness of the epithelial tissue or the height of the epithelial cells is going to become thinner and thinner or smaller and smaller. So we go from columnar cells in the smaller bronchial, bronchioles to cuboidal cells. And finally, when we get to the alveoli, to the simple squamous epithelial tissue. Once again, don't forget that the alveoli are already part of the respiratory zone. They're not part of the conducting zone. Now, there are some exceptions. Don't forget that that is going to be the two regions of the pharynx, the oro and laryngopharynx, which are structures or regions that have a dual function, meaning they serve as passageways for air and food, and consequently, they do not have some, uh, stratified squamous epithelial tissue or any of the other tissues, epithelial tissues here, uh, listed here, but they are going to be lined with stratified squamous epithelial tissue. We also see a change in the connective tissue, particularly the hyaline cartilage. We go from having very clear, you know, visual to the eye, cartilage rings, the, the amount of cartilage as we go down into the bronchi begins to slowly uh, diminish. 
for instance, right here on this picture, which is a picture cross-section of a bronchus, we now start to see, rather than rings, just chunks, or better called plates, of hyaline cartilage. And by the time we get to the smaller bronchioles, that are less than a millimeter in diameter, we don't have any cartilage anymore. And instead, we are starting to see much, much, much more um, elasticity due to the presence of elastic fibers. And when it comes to smooth muscle tissue, relative to the size of our trachea, the tracheallus muscle is essentially a, a small portion of that trachea, which, but it's smooth muscle. And relatively speaking, we see an increase in the amount of smooth muscle as we move down the, the respiratory tree. And we're going to soon learn that smooth muscle plays an important role in bronchoconstriction and bronchodilation. And so this wraps up our discussion of the bronchial tree.